I know I said this last time, but I just, I absolutely adore doing this. I just you do? love it. Oh, I do. Oh my gosh. I might have you I on. I do. All the time. Welcome to Gospel Tangents, the best source for Mormon history, science, and theology. I'm Rick Bennett. I'm excited to have Don back on for part two. And so we're going to talk about who stole the pages. Was it Lucy Harris or did she get a bad rap? We'll talk about who that is and who might be some other suspects in this uh, amazing mystery um, that's going on for almost 200 years. So we'll talk about uh, Don's conclusions and you're going to not want to miss this episode. I also want to mention that we're now selling Gospel Tangents t-shirts. Um, they look like this. Here, I'll open it up for you. So get one of these awesome t-shirts and we've got lots of colors, uh, blue, black, red, white, even more than that. So these are awesome and uh, I just want to, you know, here's a red one because, you know, we're, we're all youths, right? Uh, so anyway, those are just some examples of some of the t-shirts we've got. They're on our website. Go to gospeltangents.com shop. And you can get a t-shirt and show your support for Gospel Tangents. And I'll even make a deal with you. If you send me a photo of yourself wearing uh, one of these t-shirts, then I will send you a free PDF transcript of your choice. So send those to gospeltangents at gmail.com and I'll send you a photo. We'll probably include it in one of our future episodes. So thanks again. Really appreciate it and uh, support Gospel Tangents. Now back to our conversation with Don. And let me just mention one other thing. Buy his book if you don't have it. So, oh, actually, let me do this. You might not have to buy the book because we are going to give away a copy of The Lost 116 Pages. And that's my copy, but this could be yours because Don has even autographed it. So, if you would like this copy, please sign up for our free newsletter. Go to gospeltangents.com slash newsletter. And this could be yours. So we will draw a winner uh, on part 12. And we'll find out who is going to win this book. So sign up today. Gospeltangents.com slash newsletter. And this might be yours. So now back to our conversation with Don. Well, welcome back to Gospel Tangents. We're, we're going to do a back-to-back. We don't usually do that very often. But we didn't get through enough of the book last time. So I'm back with, with Don Bradley. And we're going to continue talking a little bit more about the book. Um, so one of the things that I think was really interesting was your discussion of what happened to the pages. Oh, yeah. Lucy Harris gets a lot of crap. Yeah. <laughs> and in your book, I, yeah. you, you said that that was undeserved. Yeah. So can, can we talk about, sure. about Lucy specifically? So the pages went missing in July 1828. So as of our recording about 192 years ago, um, for the last century and a half or so, um, Lucy Harris has been pretty much the only suspect in people's minds. Now, just recently, some new suspects have started to be raised, um, particularly um, I raised a couple in my book. Um, but it was just it came to be kind of taken for granted that it was her now she was the first person suspected by uh, martin harris uh, she had been somewhat opposed she would vacillated actually some according to lucy max smith's accounts she'd vacillated some in how she felt about the book of mormon as a project um, but there are crucial things to note about her part in that whole incident and her and and how the story developed that she stole the pages and burned them which has become the standard narrative right mm -hmm. so right. so you probably you probably know and listeners probably know the south park episode oh. right like um no um, no i, I don't so, watch south park okay but so i will tell you i have yeah. been to the martin harris pageant and that's oh, what okay. they uh, up in clark okay. city yeah. Utah. And that's, that's what they seem to, yeah, to say. Yeah, that's kind of funny to me that they see it that way. But, okay. Um, so, yeah, it's uh, every ex-Mormon, I can tell you, having previously... I'm an ex-ex-Mormon, right? Um, <laughs> every ex-Mormon knows the South the Mormon South Park episode where um, uh, Lucy Harris uh, burns, steals the manuscript. Martin Harris is portrayed as very, very credulous 
Lucy Harris is portrayed as very shrewd. She knows that this is all a sort of hoax to separate her husband from his money. And so she steals the manuscript and she burns it. And then there's a little uh, ditty that they, that they have like that's sung, you know, um, uh, Lucy Harris, smart, 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 Martin Harris, dumb. Okay. So this is the, <laughs> yes, this is, this is on South Park. So, um, Martin initially suspects that Lucy has taken the manuscript. Now he does not think that she has burned it. At no point does he think she's destroyed it. He thinks she's hidden it or she's given it to someone else. He thinks it's probably the latter and it's not clear why exactly he thinks that, but initially this is what he thinks happens. So this causes a rift in their marriage. They, they go their separate ways for uh, eight years. Um, they never divorce, but for eight years they're separated. And then she dies young. She dies at the age of 40. And um, on her deathbed, she says she didn't do it and she doesn't know where they are. She doesn't know what happened to the pages. Now, one of the things that we know from various sources about uh, Lucy Harris is that she was a devout Quaker. And if you know much about the Quaker faith, they tend to take what are called some of Jesus' more difficult teachings and um, centralize those. So um, they're pacifists. They believe, it, like, if, if somebody strikes you on the right cheek, you turn your left cheek to them, right? Like, you don't, you don't strike back. Wasn't um, Richard Nixon a Quaker also? Yeah, he, was, he grew up a Quaker. Yeah, he doesn't... <laughs> I don't think he ended up that way. Yeah, based on his war behavior, I would say, have to say no, but yeah, he started out as a Quaker. And another thing that Nixon did not abide by is uh, Quakers are required to have absolute honesty. So the teaching in, in, of Jesus in the Sermon on the Mount, um, you know, let your, it's in, in the King James, it's confusing. It says, swear not at all, just say yay, yay, nay, nay. In other translations, this is elucidated. What it means is, let your yes be yes and let your no be no. You don't swear oaths because every word you say is supposed to be as if you're under oath. It's supposed to be strictly honest. Lucy Harris was a very devout Quaker. She also was someone who really tended to speak her mind. She had a reputation for being combative. She's not somebody who tended to slink around, lie, right, do things behind people's back and hide them. She was very forthright and she was very devout in her Quaker beliefs. For her to say before God on her deathbed, right, which is what the account says, um, that she didn't know what happened to the manuscript gives us pretty good reason to believe that she didn't know what happened to the manuscript. And someone who was completely convinced by this was Martin Harris. So even though they had been estranged for eight years, Martin Harris was no stranger to the fact that his wife had become an enemy to Mormonism. She was certainly an antagonist to him. She was a combative person. She had her faults, but he could not bring himself to believe when he found out she said this on her deathbed, that she had lied on her deathbed about this as she's about to meet God. He couldn't believe it. So he then ab completely abandons the view for the rest of his life that Lucy Harris had anything to do with the theft. And recall, he never thought she burned the manuscript. So the first mention in the historical record of Lucy Harris burning the manuscript, or the idea that anybody burned the manuscript, is in 1851. So think about it. the manuscript is stolen in 1828. In 1851, someone, I believe, I'm um, pretty sure it was Orsimus Turner, writes a history and he says that it was the manuscript, he thinks it was taken by Lucy Harris, but he says she either um, burned it or she hid it, either destroyed it or she hid it or she gave it to somebody else. He doesn't know which, he doesn't pretend to know which. Now, five years later in the same area, an anonymous resident of Manchester repeats Turner's words but changes the emphasis, like publishes an anonymous uh, account and says, Lucy Harris took the manuscript and she either um, destroyed it 
or she hit it, probably the former. So now they're giving two options and they're stating a preference between those options. Several years later, uh, in the 1860s, you've got another account, uh, Pomeroy Tucker uh, comes out and says, he just leaves out the other option altogether. He says, Lucy Harris took it and she destroyed it. So what's happening is that the story, so first up, the idea that she, she stole it and burned it doesn't show up till nearly a quarter century after the fact. Then it's just admittedly a guess. That guess becomes more certain. It's like a game of telephone where it gets repeated and the more it gets repeated, the more it's the only option and it's a sure thing. This is what happened. And in fact, the further you get, when you line, I've taken the trouble, I've got about 45 sources about the manuscript theft. I've taken the trouble to line them up chronologically from the 1830s all the way to actually the 1930s when people who heard Martin Harris give an account of this before his death in the late 1870s were remembering years later what he'd said. So you've got like a hundred year span of sources, right? 45 sources, when you line them up chronologically, an interesting pattern is that the further you get from the theft, the more likely people are to say that Lucy Harris took the manuscript and burned it, the further you get from the theft. So as a historian, that is exactly the opposite of the pattern that I would like to see. What I'd like to see is, oh, the sources closer to the actual event are more likely to say such and such. That gives that would give me more confidence in it, right? If if I look back, if I lined up all these sources and I look back at like the 1830s or whatever, and everybody then is saying, yeah, it's Lucy Harris and she burned it, and then later people are not certain about it, I'd be like, we got to go with those early sources, right? These people, they were closer to the event. They probably actually knew something. The early people don't seem to know anything. It's only the further you get from it that they become convinced that they know something. And what they know then is just a good story. Like, like it seems like the story uh, that Lucy Harris takes the manuscript and she burns it, it's like a, an effective meme, right? It has like sticking power. It sticks the, the image of the disgruntled wife throwing those pages into the flames, right? Like an image has just popped into your head. And it's a pretty potent one, right? It's, it's the kind of image that sticks. Now, when I, when I say, oh, we don't know who took it and we don't know what they did with it, that creates no image in your mind. It doesn't really stick. It doesn't really have staying power, right? It doesn't really have, that's not a meme that's effective in passing itself on. So there's, there's really not good reason to think that, there, there's certainly reason to think Lucy Harris could have been involved in the theft. Um, but I would even, but there are even reasons to question that her deathbed uh, testimony, right? Um, uh, which comes to us by way of Martin himself, by the way. Um, uh, oh, what was the other one I just had? Um, okay, so while it's been widely assumed that Lucy Harris took the manuscript, here's something really important to note about that manuscript theft. The manuscript for some time was in Lucy Harris's possession. When Martin first brings it home, he takes it, he gives it to his wife. He gives it to her. She takes it, puts it in her bureau, locks it up. Now, while she is out of town for a couple days, a friend comes by and Martin wants to show it to that friend. So what he does is he like pries on the bureau till he can get that door open, right? And he, he looks at the manuscript. In the process, he damages her bureau. This is one of the reasons, another reason for her to be upset with him over this. Then he locks the manuscript in a drawer of his own. He goes out of town for a couple days. He comes back. The manuscript is gone. There's no sign of tampering with the, the drawer where he locked it. So uh, that leaves a mystery, right? We don't really know what happened to the manuscript. What we do know is when the manuscript was in Lucy Harris's possession, it was absolutely safe. It's only after the manuscript leaves her possession and goes into Martin's possession that it disappears. That doesn't exactly point strongly to Lucy Harris. If she wanted to take the manuscript and destroy it, she had 
every opportunity to do that the easy way when it was in her possession, when it's in her bureau. Why, if she wanted to destroy the manuscript, would she have waited until it was difficult to get at and somebody would have to break in? Well, maybe she was upset about Martin breaking her bureau. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. then she destroyed it. Or, maybe. I mean, maybe, maybe right? That, that could be a factor. Certainly that didn't make her any happier with him or with the Book of Mormon, right? Right, right. Um, but... What I'm saying is it, this is anything but a no, it's treated like it's a no-brainer that Lucy Harris took this manuscript and destroyed it. It's anything but that. Uh, she would have had more access than most people because she was in the household, right? But there isn't, there's, there's nothing even close to a smoking gun and there are reasons to really doubt, you know. Her, her deathbed statement at the very least gives reason to question that narrative. Um, and there, and you know, I mean, suppose that there were a crime committed, and um, people just fixated on a certain suspect, right? So much that they never even bothered to look at any other suspects, consider any other suspects. How are, how likely are they to catch another suspect to identify who really did this, right? Mm, right. Well, not very if they've prematurely fixated on like this particular person. That's what's happened here. People fixated on Lucy Harris without really considering who else could have been involved. I hope you enjoyed our conversation with historian Don Bradley. In our next conversation, we'll talk about who would be a good possible suspect for the theft of the Lost Pages. At Lucy Max Smith gives an account in her memoir saying that Flanders Dyke at one time before the manuscript disappeared he stole the anthem transcript temporarily. So we, this guy had already stolen documents, other documents associated with the coming forth of the Book of Mormon. Then just a few months later, uh, like four months later, the uh, Book of Mormon manuscript goes missing. Why wouldn't we suspect this guy, right? If you'd like to hear the entire interview uncut, please support Gospel Tangents and become a subscriber. For just $5 a month, go to uh, patreon.com slash gospel tangents and you can hear the entire interview. And you can also get uh, transcripts available at either our Amazon website or if you want to give the money to me and not Amazon, please subscribe on my website at gospeltangents.com and you can click the yellow subscribe button. Of course, we're also on Facebook, Twitter, and all the other places. Uh, make sure you subscribe on iTunes at tinyurl.com slash gospel tangents. And don't forget to click here to subscribe on YouTube here for a transcript. And over here, we've got some more of our great videos. Thanks again for listening.